Hey YouTube! Hello! Today, I'm going to be reviewing the 4.5 second half banners consisting of Kaidahara Kazuha and the Hydro Dragon Sovereign himself, Navalette. This banner's pull value is absolutely insane, and if you're a newer player, it may be a little difficult choosing who's best for you. Before I get into some reasons as to why you should or shouldn't pull, here's a quick disclaimer. I won't be covering the 4 stars since if you're just wishing on the banner, you'd really be only trying to get the 5 star since 4 stars are never guaranteed. If the 4 stars are noteworthy though on either the character banner or the weapon banner, I will pin something in the comments so make sure to check that too. So enough stalling, let's jump into the second half banners in version 4.5. The first 5 star we'll talk about is Kazuha. He's a great character to have in your party and doesn't require any crazy investment outside of EM. If you're playing any teams that consist of Cryo, Electro, Pyro or Hydro damage related carries, then Kazuha will significantly enhance those DPSs or the reactions simply because of the passive increasing the specific element damage bonus that he has swelled. On top of this, he will also be using the VV set which will further reduce the enemy's resistances to that swelled element, overall leading to a huge damage boost. He's really free to play friendly, only requiring elemental mastery to boost your entire team's damage potential and the other stats really don't matter. You also have a great free to play craftable sword in Iron Sting which will further give you some nice damage increase to the rest of your team. He does have other options like Favonius if you need more energy for your team or Sacrificial Greatsword again to generate more energy but Iron Sting can work great if your DPS is an elemental damage dealer and with Arlecchino coming around the corner he might be a great pickup for her. Kazuha is also an excellent grouper and has stronger grouping capabilities than Venti. He's an extremely fun and flashy character with great animations and really is one of the best characters in Genshin Impact and has been ever since his release and I doubt anyone will power creep him until the very far future. He also has a pretty handy exploration talent which decreases stamina consumption when you are running and this can be pretty noticeable when you first put Kazuha into your party. The only downsides to Kazuha is that there are no actual reactions with Dendro, Geo and Animo itself but even then he's so strong with the swallowable elements that this does not even matter. Some great compositions that you could run with Kazuha would be either a Raiden hyper carry consisting of Raiden, Kazuha, Kujosara and Bennett. Raiden can also be interchanged with any Electro DPSs since Kazuha will be swirling Electro and Kujosara, especially if you have C6, will buff Electro characters crit damage by a huge amount and Bennett just for the attack boost if the Electro characters scale off attack. Ayaka Freeze is also another good one, having Ayaka as the main DPS, Kazuha, Shenha as the third slot but if you don't have her you can go Rosaria and then a Hydro option just for the freeze aspect, most likely Kokomi. There's also International where you have Child, Kazuha, Shangling and Bennett. This is a notoriously good team just because of the amount of reactions that they can produce. And everyone in that team can do damage off field but the only downside to this is that you will have to manage Child's elemental skill swap very carefully. Hutao Vape is also another good one if you're looking for another Vape team. This will consist of Hutao, Kazuha, Singcho and Yelan. Sometimes may need to swap either Singcho or Yelan with a shielder if you don't tend to dodge. Which you should really try to do that if you play Hutao. And yeah, you get the idea. Any elemental comp that benefits from elemental damage increase or elemental resistance down will perform significantly better due to Kazuha being on your team. Kazuha will also deal some significant damage by just building EM due to the swells hitting pretty nicely. Something to note about Kazuha is that you want to max all of his talents to get his maximum damage potential since his plunge after casting a skill to swallow any element and group enemies scales on his plunging multiplier from his basic attacks. So make sure to max this out if you want a bit more damage. As for the other 5 star on the banner, we've got Nervalette. He's not a support for buffing your teammates, but he's a support for killing every enemy on the field so you don't need to worry about them. He is one of the best DPSs that we've got in Genshin Impact for a long long time and he's proven himself to be one of the best DPSs because players have been able to solo clear with him in the Abyss if the Abyssal Blessing was actually suited for him, which already says a lot about his power level. In my opinion, he's really free to play friendly to build and has a decent free to play option in Prototype Amber. His weapon does significantly increase his damage by almost up to 30% and also increases how cool he looks. But honestly, with his damage being so high, I don't think you'll be able to notice the difference since you're most likely going to be using him in a proper team too, rather than by himself. His burst and slot artifact set is the Marichose Hunter, meaning you can stack as much crit damage as possible and give him a crit rate circlet, or you could even give him a crit rate weapon if you do buy the battle pass. By doing this, you can put a crit damage circlet and his ratio will be really, really easy to uphold. He works well in a lot of teams and as I've said before he can even solo the abyss without any constellations if you've invested well enough into him and have the correct enemies to fight. He's a really solid DPS and a great pickup as a main carry for one of your teams. Now this is just my opinion, in terms of which banner 5 star is better for you really just depends on your account. I would say in most cases that Kazuha would be a better option simply because he's able to buff any existing or future elemental DPSs to an insane amount with his passive and the VV artifact set. And most likely no other character will be as busted as he will be until the far future. But that's just my assumption. 
but if you do need a reliable DPS, Nervalet can fill this role in very well. As for the weapon banner, we'll talk about Kaza's signature first, Freedom Swan. It's a great weapon for Kaza and will really help you if you're planning on trying to one cycle clear enemies as fast as possible. The duration of the buff can last up to 12 seconds and has a cooldown of 20 seconds, meaning it has an 8 second downtime where you won't get either the charge, plunging, normal or attack damage increase. It will also increase the equipping character's damage by 10%, which Kazuha will deal a decent amount of damage due to his swirls from his ultimate being off field. While this all sounds great, I don't recommend this for free to play players since usually you won't be one cycle clearing higher HP enemies and you will have a better time with passives like Iron Sting, Favonius or Sacrificial Sword. By using these weapons, it will also save you your primos for some better weapons down the line. It will increase Kazuha's own damage and can actually be really useful if you're playing other characters like Raiden, Utao, Nevelet, Ganyu, and maybe a future character if they use their autos a lot. This weapon typically would be better for whales since it will just amplify your damage even more and if you're close to being able to one cycle and don't have enough damage to push you past the line. Free to play options can work great for Kazuha and you really don't need this weapon to make him work well. The only other good user of this weapon would be Jean, so only pull this weapon if you're a whale or want to try one cycle clearing content with Kazuha. Free to plays, please don't be baited by this. As for the other weapon, we have Tome of the Eternal Flow. The only use case of this weapon is for Nervalet himself. Yanfei does also use charge attacks for her damage, however she can't increase or decrease her HP at will, meaning you won't be able to stack the charge attack part of the passive easily. So really, if you pull for this weapon, you're only going to do it for Nervalet himself. It is his best weapon and definitely is a lot stronger than his C1 if you're playing C0 Nervalet in an optimal team composition where you trigger three different elemental reactions. So if you want a bigger damage increase, you should definitely go for the weapon. You should also keep in mind that it's really likely that no other future character will want what its passive does, making this weapon a really niche weapon. It gives Nervalet all the stats that he wants, being HP, charge attack damage bonus, up to a 42% bonus damage when maxed, and some extra energy to permanently upkeep his burst costs in the correct rotations so you can keep charge attacking. Here's a graph to show you the damage comparisons between Nervalet's weapons, and I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that it's a really busted option for him. If you're struggling on choosing between his C1 or his weapon, and you have 200 pulls to not mind wasting if you go hard pity on either the weapon banner or the character banner, then I'd say go for the weapon since it is a bigger damage increase, but the interruption resistance from his C1 can also be useful sometimes if you don't have a shielder in your team. His C1 also allows him to be played in a double hydro team consisting of Farina, an Anemo character, either Jean, Kazuha or Shan Yun, and a flex slot for another elemental reactions so Nervalet can have his draconic passive maxed when only having two reactions rather than three reactions. Remember, you shouldn't roll on the weapon banner for four stars as they are not guaranteed. Only roll for the five stars that you want. If you're not fussed about getting any of these five star weapons, you could just wait for a future banner to have even more cracked options together or just options for other characters that you may have on your account and want their weapon too to make it more worth it if you lose the 50-50 to the second option. And that wraps up everything I've got to say about the 4.5 second half banners. If you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful, make sure to like this video or even subscribe. It'll help me out a lot. Thanks. Good luck if you're planning on summoning and I'll catch you guys in the next one.